Welcome to the Author's Corner with A.C. Campbell. Join us as we take a tour around the literary industry with interviews and features within and throughout the industry. And now, the show. Welcome to an all-new episode of The Author's Corner. As always, I'm your host, H.D. Campbell. I want to start the show by um, just being so appreciative. Yesterday, I got to co-host an event uh, for Timothy B. McCann. You know, the award-winning author, best-selling author, and this time it was for his book, Divorcing Atlanta. It was so awesome. I got to run the chat room, got to speak for a little bit. I haven't hosted or co-hosted anything in so long, uh, mainly because of the pandemic and things have slowed down for me. But as I now come back into the fold, I'll be doing a lot more hosting and co-hosting and things like that. So I'm ready. So, Mr. McCann, thank you so much. I really appreciate you. If you guys remember, we spoke last week on the Ultra Center about divorcing Atlanta, and he had so much advice to give, so much to say. Again, it was like, you know, it, for me, speaking to one of your heroes is so awesome. So thank you again, Mr. McCann, and I look forward to working with you in the future. Next, I'm there's two books coming out of Hard Drive um, here soon. Next is my revised Sergeant Wise Guy Chronicles. It's going to be unlike the last Sergeant Wise Guy Chronicles. In fact, I've upgraded Sergeant Wise Guy so much to where you will almost um, not recognize. In fact, if anyone decides they want to make a movie about it, he looks just like Michael B. Jordan if you just look at the cover. If you look at the cover of my last book, uh, the uh, the last version of it, and it's almost like Michael B. Jordan features. So, I'm just I'm just throwing it out there. Then we have another author, Charmaine Singleton Moon. She is so awesome. She's written, man. She's gonna tease you with this book, man. I'm telling you. I'm putting her name out there right now because her book is coming soon. So, been working on it, getting it edited along with Sergeant Wise Guy Chronicles remix. It's going to be great. So we're looking at new season right here at H.C. Campbell Productions and at Hard Drive Publishing. Now off to the show. Today, we spoke to three people. Now, I normally do two interviews, but one's a couple, so that counts. <laughs> but the first lady, she is what I like to call a walking testimony. Uh, she has survived cancer. She has survived domestic abuse. She has survived so much, and that's what I like to call a walking testimony. A walking testimony is someone who has not only a testimony to share, they've actually lived to the point where they can actually go through almost death and come back and talk about it. And Tracy Lynn Smalls is no exception. I mean, she talks about uh, survival and how you can just live your best life and live out loud. And she teaches you how to do that in a new book that she has. So listen to that interview and learn to live out loud. Next, we're going to talk to the Carters. <laughs> we already we spoke to Felicia Carter a few months ago here on the office corner, but now we're going to speak to both Felicia and her husband, Walter, of Above the Heart LLC. They're going to talk to you about marriage. How to save your marriage if your marriage has any issues because one thing we don't realize in marriage marriage is work we don't just get married just to get married just to have sex whatever we marriage is work and they don't just sit here and talk about it they're actually about it they're actually telling you their experiences and what they've survived and by hearing what they've survived they'll teach you how to survive marriage as well so stay tuned for that so when we come back we're going to start the ball rolling with Tracy N. Spalls. Just who is author H.D. Campbell? He's the multi-gene author who can take you on several trips at once. With H.D. Campbell, you can have a romance, you can track a killer, or even stop an international incident. For 30 years and still writing, H.D. Campbell will take you on trips you've never been before.
Learn more about him by logging on to hdcampbell3.com or check him out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, and LinkedIn. Read his rewrites of How to Lose a Black Woman and Late Murder at 10 with a new title coming soon. And as always, let your writing fuel your spirit. By Late Murder at 10 by H.D. Campbell, former investigative reporter Mark Alexander thought his life hit a slump when a mass shooting results in the murder of a controversial news anchor. Can Mark get out of his head long enough to crack this case? Well, I'm not going to tell you. You'll have to get your own copy of Late Murder at 10 on Amazon.com and coming soon to your favorite bookstore. Now, I can describe Tracy in Smalls in several phrases. I call it living testimony, and I've already explained it to you in the first segment. But when I say live out loud, she lives out loud. She'll get up every morning and she'll tell you, hey, <laughs> Do you thank God this morning? Or, hey, you're up. Why not get out and have some fun? Why not get out and do something? Whatever you do, you do it. She always has something positive to say. You know, and if you go on her Facebook page, you will be so inspired. You will so love everything she does. So, to get to know her now, here's the interview. Uh, the Irresistible You, Evolving to a Better Version of Yourself. I'm getting that book. I'm, I actually love the title, but tell me a little bit about the book. Sure. Um, first and foremost, it was definitely not one that was intended to be written. Of course, it was during the um, pandemic last year. I started writing. I was home and I just started typing on my phone. And before you knew it, I was writing and writing well, typing and typing on my phone. And then um, I just decided that I'll put it into a book format. And the title, um, I always like to think and feel that not just myself, but each and everyone in this entire world, they're just irresistible individuals. But only they themselves have to truly believe that within themselves, that yes, indeed, they're um, irresistible. Awesome. Well, my next question is, I go to your Facebook page. And you're so positive, and there's so many, well, I want to talk about some of the things you survived, because you live out loud, you, you just have a lot of, you know, happiness. I mean, ex explain where a lot of that comes from. Sure. And, you know, it's really a great thing to know that with you actually saying that when you go to my Facebook page, you know, it appears as if I'm living life out boldly, limitless, fearless. And for me, that is the image, that is the perception that I'm wanting people to partake and gravitate. Some may, some may not, but however, it really doesn't matter. But for me, I've always been like a very optimistic person, like literally just that person that always saw the best in any and every given situation. And then throughout the years with having, you know, several life hiccups and challenges, it just enabled me to like fully blossom into being this very, very optimistic person, you know? So I'm very grateful for the life experiences that I encountered. And then I made those storms into beautiful stories. And then ultimately, you know, my agenda is, my purpose on earth is to be an encourager. And with you saying that that's what you perceive when you're on my social media, I'm really grateful and thankful to know that not only just you, but I'm, I'm hoping others feel the same. So, you know, I've had some life storms. Um, I'm a thriver of domestic violence. Um, I'm a two-time remission cancer thriver, liposarcoma and breast cancer. So with those life hiccups throughout the years, it just really pushed me full force into just literally living life every second that I have, regardless of whatever transpired in my life. It can be the worst of the worst. I personally, I'm going to pull up that positivity, that positive situation, 
something in that situation that's going to be positive no matter what. You know, you're what I like to call a walking testimony. I love reading about and talking to walking testimonies because anybody can give a testimony, but when you live a testimony, that's a whole beautiful, beautiful thing. So I want to talk about a couple of this world for a second. What was the road between cancer and the way God intervened to where you, where you say, I'm not going to let them beat me. I guess is what I'm at. Oh, um, that journey for me, being diagnosed, again, you know, to reiterate, just being an optimistic person, and I truly believe that everything starts mentally in the mind, your cognition. So that journey from being diagnosed to, cur to the current moment, if it wasn't for my mental stability and speaking positive and speaking life into my life, then chances are I'm not sure where this journey would have taken me. You know, I could possibly be busted, disgusted, depressed, sad, you know, giving up, losing hope, but that's not a part of my character. I'm not wired like that. So the journey was basically giving the diagnosis and watering my mind with positivity, speaking life into my life and declaring, decreeing what it is that I want. And, you know, um, to this day, I've been granted that which I speak and that which I know, but you know, it starts with our cognition. Well, I'll tell you this. Every time I come on to you, every time I log on to Facebook, you're the first thing I see, and I'll, you say, tell yourself it's going to be a beautiful day. Tell yourself you yeah. can achieve. Tell yourself that you can never give up. I don't know if you notice or not, a lot of us have to get up and actually work towards promoting ourselves. You get up and you automatically promote yourself because just by these affirmations, and I love it. We're proud of you to get up every morning, to wake up every morning, put your feet on the floor, open your eyes, and say, it's going to be a beautiful day. Yeah. Day. You said what enabled me to do that? Yes. Just me as an individual, it's, it's a process. This is the daily routine. And it starts with myself, the person that gets up in the morning, their eyes are open, they hit the floor, both feet is on the floor, or if they don't have limbs, however you get up. Your duty that I would like to tell each and, end of, each and every one is to still get up and say those positive affirmations. Because over time, guess what's going to ultimately happen if you're conscious enough? It's going to become a routine. It's going to be a habit. And then before you know it, regardless of whatever storm comes into our lives on a daily basis or however often, if you're repeating these positive self-affirmations on a daily basis, immediately you should be able to pull out something positive in that storm. So how I do it is I just wake up and I say it as I'm driving into the job. You know, I have that 30-minute time alone. I'm speaking positive affirmation. And it starts immediately when I open up my eyes. And see, I love that. Now, my next question is, how do you keep that even when the day is not as good itself? You said, how do I keep that when the day is not even as good? Well, well, when, well uh, let me rephrase that. How do you keep it when challenges come your way? Again, it goes back to the mindset. Knowing that it's the inevitable. Am I wishing, trust, or believing that, you know, we're going to have these life storms and challenges? Absolutely not. But what happens is when they come, again, if you're practicing on a daily basis, these positive affirmations, when that roadblock comes, when that bump in the road comes, you should be able to pull out in your cognition, in your mindset that, okay, let's not focus on the negative of this situation. Let's not be pessimistic, but let's reiterate and be optimistic. Let's speak life. Let's speak life to this situation. Let's speak life into somebody else's life. So like you said, for some people, it's a challenge just to get up and to think positive because they got so much going on. We all do. I do. But I don't focus on that. 
I focus on allowing myself to know that no matter what, everything happens strategically. There's absolutely no mistakes that take place, transfers in my life or anyone's life on this earth. Knowing that, for me, and I hope that this is instrumental to someone else, hopefully it enables you to know that. When we know things don't just happen, that it is strategically planned, thumbs up, celebrate. Our duty is to make sure that not only are we celebrating in that storm, but we're telling, teaching others how to do just the same. Yeah, I love that. I really love that. So back to your book for a second. So you have this book. How has it been received so far? How was? How has your book been received so far? Um, I haven't really been pushing it as much as I really want to because it's just been, I just released it maybe a week or two. Thus far, I've been getting really great um, feedback and I'm asking my supporters to, you know, as well, you know, leave reviews. And, you know, it's just, I'm amazed. I feel really elated that, you know, I'm getting the support thus far that I'm getting. So I can only trust and believe and know that it's going to get even better and be of a blessing to someone else. I have to disagree with you on something you just said. You're saying you're not really promoting the book. Every time I go on your Facebook page, you're promoting yourself, you're promoting <laughs> that book. Your positivity promotes that book every single day. So yeah, I am disagreeing with you on my own show. Just letting you know that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. So if that is the case, then I, I would just imagine what it's going to be like when I personally feel like I'm pushing it. <laughs> but, but you know what, though? And, and I'm going Right. And I'm being, I'm being totally serious. Everything I see from the pictures you display, from the affirmations, from the fact that you live out loud every day. In other, okay, let me explain. I'll give you an example. How can you write this book and be miserable every day? I don't want to buy that book from someone who's miserable, who has something to say negative every time. How can you write this book that every day you got a problem? And the woe is me this, woe is me that. Well, I don't want to buy that book. So no, you living out loud will make someone want to buy that book. And I, and and it's great that you've actually kind of put that analogy out there. And that's what it is that I'm wanting people to know and to understand that not only am I presenting that way on social media and you know putting out that energy. I want that vibration, I want that energy to be transferable and know that it's the authentic truth, Tracy Smalls. And see, you have survived so much. When I, and when I mean she lives out loud, I mean she really lives out loud. I mean, I, you know, I, it, it's just hard to describe. She'll get up there and, you know, She'll, she'll, one day, one day she'll be meditating. One day she'll be in, in lingerie, just saying, hey, here I am, I'm out there, you know. But you can be out there too. All you need to do is just, again, live positively. Exactly. And here's the deal in regards to, you know, just life in general. You know, some people are, people are bound. You know, for whatever reason, for whatever situation, whatever circumstances, and, you know, really feel that they just can't get out the mud, that they're, you know, have a continuation of spinning in the mud, spinning in the mud. They're bound because they're so consumed about what their mama going to think, what their daddy going to think, their sister, their brother, their husband, their wife, their cut buddies, and, and, and it keeps them bound. But my duty is to show you, tell you, teach you that you don't have to be in an agreement with anyone when you look in that mirror and you are okay with the person that looks back at you i want to tell you on a daily basis do you unapologetically because what happens is when you're bound you're stagnated you're stuck i've been there i was bound i was stuck i was stagnated 
when I was going through that abuse over 15 years ago. I was so embarrassed. I could not speak on it. And that kept me in a box. And that was not a great feeling, of feeling ashamed. I had allowed myself to be attached to feeling embarrassed and feeling ashamed. And, you know, as I'm living life out and as I got to the terms of being able to voice and speak what I was going through, it took, on a Sunday, I was sitting in church and the Holy Spirit said to me, you're holding people hostage. And I looked around. And then I heard the Holy Spirit say to me again, you're holding people hostage. And right then and there, I knew it was time to break out, get out of that box, relieve, get rid of, dot trash, that sense of feeling embarrassed, that sense of feeling ashamed, and speak and let my voice be heard about the fact that I had been going through an abuse and that to this day now, moving forward, I'm a domestic violence driver. So I say all that to say that, we got to no longer stay bound. Somebody needs me. Somebody needs me just as I am. Somebody needs you just as you are. Somebody wakes up every day and that person is looking for that individual that has been assigned to them to show them that even in the darkest of the darkest moments, there's light. You just got to tap into it. You just got to be able to have the willpower. Willpower mind control to say, you know what? I got this. I'm going to do it. Somebody needs me. I need somebody. In our actuality, that's what life is all about. You got to know why you're on this earth. What's your purpose? You know what I come to see? Um, someone who, well, as far as I, I've interviewed a lot of domestic violence survivors, and I have a few within my circle. And one thing that yeah. you do, and one thing that you do for them that I love so much, especially with your lingerie shoots and everything. A lot, a lot, a lot of yeah. victims, a lot of victims of domestic violence are told that they're ugly, that nobody wants them but me, and yeah. all this stuff. One thing that you, that one thing that you tell them is when you do that, you tell them that they're beautiful. They matter they matter to someone, they look good to someone. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, definitely one thing I can say is for me, I was never told that, which was a good thing, but you know, just the verbal abuse itself, you know, was not one of the best or the most pleasant experience. So, you know, just, um, yeah, that was not one of the issues that I had that, you know, that was verbalized to me that no one would want me or that I wasn't pretty or that I wasn't sexy or anything like that. But, you know, just the experience in itself, you know, does have a meaningful impact on an individual's life. And it's up to me, it's up to each and every individual to determine how they're gonna process that experience. And like I said, you know, it took me ugh, a little minute before I heard that voice, that Holy Spirit, and I know the voice of the Holy Spirit. And after that, I. I mean, I, I jumped out. I was bold, you know, and I boldly spoke on it. But it took that encounter, man, that encounter. And I, I'm so grateful that I had that encounter with the Holy Spirit. Awesome. And ever since then, I've been talking about it. I've been speaking on it. And, you know, I've been that voice. And even to this day, you know, I want to be the voice to the voiceless and, and to know that, to let, you know, everyone know that it's okay to not be okay, but to also seek professional help in the process because yeah. you don't have to go through it alone no you don't and Which, you shouldn't go through it alone no which actually go up briefly to my next question have you been able to reach out to people and help out on an individual basis over the years i have not like i really want to because what i've come to realize in the process of working through with individuals individually, I found them not quite ready to move out of that space. And that's okay, but you got to know as an individual to what degree, to what level you're ready to work with individuals as such. If that makes sense what I'm saying. Oh, it makes plenty of sense. And then every day is a learning yeah. process, so. It is, yeah. So, you know, you got to know 
you know, where you are when it comes to reaching out and helping individuals and being able to walk with them, alongside them through the journey, you know, because some may still feel, oh, gee, you know, what am I going to do? How am I going to move forward? You know, I'm still liking, really loving this person, then I don't want to let go, you know, and then, you know, they may say, okay, but it was just, an accident or they were just upset or they were just mad or whatever the case it does not matter no one deserves that type of treatment i don't care what they were going through we just don't but it takes you as an individual to come to that realization that you don't deserve it well my well uh, right well um this scenario for a second Okay, you got it all together. You, you, you fine. You perfect and everything. But I mean, I'm not like you. I mean, I'm not like you. I can't. I can't just get up and be happy. I'm still in this situation. I can't be you. I mean, how do you? How would you deal with that type of pushback? How would I deal with that? What now? Type of pushback. Then I can't be like you. I can't be perfect like you. Your life is perfect now. My life isn't perfect. I'm still going through this. Yeah. How, how do you deal with? And the thing that? is. You know, um, just speaking personally, and I know you said that, and you were just giving a scenario, but you know, I do want to make it clear that, you know, my life is not perfect. I don't have it all together. I'm working in progress on a daily basis. But what happens and what matters is in order for someone to get to that level of moving forward and getting to a different space in their mind and emotionally, physically, spiritually, to all degrees, you know, you got to be willing to put forth the work. You got to get willing to get in the trenches and say, you know what? This is who I am. This is where I am right now. And you say to yourself, is this where I want to be? Is this a good sense of feeling as to where I am at currently? And if you're saying no, let's do the work. So it just takes a conscious decision for someone to literally get into that mind space where I'm feeling great, I'm feeling better. But you gotta say, I want to feel better. I want to get better. And then surround yourself around those type of people, those type of situations. Because in all actuality, it's a full circle effect. But you gotta know that. So that's what it takes. Just getting up and knowing that that's where you wanna be. But if you wanna stay stuck in the mud, what some people want to still be where they're at. I don't knock that, not at all. But like I said, it just takes an individual conscious decision and sticking to it and doing, 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 doing the committed action steps that it takes to get you to another level in your life, if you want it. That requires, you know, having that spiritual spirituality building. It requires having that individualized building of yourself building you up no matter what and then it requires having that tribe those instrumental people that's going to help you whether it be your pastor your best friend your mama your daddy that professional counselor that professional therapist it takes a tribe it takes a village to get us to the next level but the decision is mine if i want it the decision is yours the decision is optional you know I love the fact that you use tribe mentality because the thing is, a lot of us don't realize that we do have help and assistance if we need it. We do have that tribe of people who are willing to go go through the water for you, go through the fire for you, as long as yeah. you're willing to help. So I think that's one of the other problems. We don't we don't realize that we have help if we need it. Yes, and just being able to you know realize it and accept it. You know, some people are not that accepting of, you know, help, you know, and sometimes, oftentimes, pride may get in the way. So then you've got that dynamics where you've got to, you know, let down that pride and say, you know what, I need some help. Mm -hmm. And I'm not okay, but I want to get okay. See, I love that. I love that. So my next question for you is, have you ever had a pushback on anything on your page? Have I had a what? Push back on anything on your page, any of your affirmation. Has anyone pushed back on your page? Just anything in general? Yeah. Of course I have. And Who have not right. And how do you deal with it? You know what? Again, like I said, I'm a work in progress. And my immediate reaction is just because I have no filter. 
and I'm working on <laughs> and I'm just well, being honest. I'm working on making sure that I have filter and it's a daily work in progress with me. But the way that I deal with it, I literally, when I have those, what do you call them, kickbacks? Mm -hmm. When I have them, I just literally speak my truth. I allow everyone to know it is my social media page. You can choose to be on it, stay on it, take me, take me off. Whatever you want to do is my page, is my voice. And I know that I don't have to water down who I am, even as I'm building upon my business, inspiring the world, Black Males Acknowledgement Movement. As I'm building upon my professional life and speaking and becoming a life self-love coach, I know personally Tracy Smalls don't have to water down who I am. So my response to kickback is, you can take it or leave it. You can go kick rocks. I don't care. I really don't. You know what's funny about that, Duke? And I tell people that all the time. Look, I I I pay this into that bill. This is my page. If you you can always delete me. I, hey, I don't mind losing a friend or two. If you either like it or you go, I'm not gonna apologize, water myself down, or nothing. So don't even ask me to. <laughs> and that's the key. Yeah, you know how I deal with it is. You know, I, I speak my truth. It may come out not so nice to some, but. It doesn't matter at the end of the day because as long as I'm speaking my truth and I know without a shadow of a doubt, I know like I know like I know like I know. With my tribe that's assigned to me on this earth, I can show up however the hell I want to and they're going to be okay with it. And that's what I love about knowing that. Because when you begin to water down who you are as an individual, you're changing, you're transforming. But the change and the transformation is not for you, the person that looks back at you. It's for them people on social media. It's for whomever that you're trying to please. Sister, brah, show up in your authentic self, always. And that's what, and you know, that's what, that's what I was trying to say in the beginning, you know, uh, to, you know, to the viewers and, you know, you and the viewers is more of, I read your page every day and I get inspired. And so whoever wants to be inspired, who wants to get up and say, I will not let this day ruin me. I will not give up. I will get up and do my, be my best self. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And that's what it's all about. You know, just, you know, knowing every day when you wake up, you're, you're just not existing just to be existing. You know, to accomplish whatever you define as success and then die. I have a duty to serve humanity with my gift as an exhortation. I'm an encourager by nature. And the greatest thing about it is getting up every day, every day and knowing what I've been created to do, my purpose. And I walk in it daily. And you know, thank you for letting me know that that's what happens when you come to my page. You're inspired, you're encouraged, and I love to know that. You know, I'm not good, you know, as far, and please, and please don't be offended, but from now on, you'll be known to me as one of my many walking testimonies. So I just have to call you walking testimony. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's, that's sort of what I see you as now. <laughs> awesome. No problem. And I'm not offended at all. <laughs> I don't guess, you know, if it works for you, it works for me. I mean, cause God and I am a walking testimony, you know, being diagnosed in one year with two different cancer. Come on. That's a lot for any individual to phantom, to conceptualize, to even go through. I mean, like I say, you survived so much. I mean, and God is not done with you yet, so <laughs> you still have oh, all to go. <laughs> and I'm definitely a willing vessel. <laughs> <laughs> so that is no problem. So what's in the future for you? I'm going to be traveling the world as an inspiring speaker, along with my virtual assistant. And with that, I'm actually gonna be promoting my book as well and being able to be instrumental and to uplift and encourage and inspire our black males out there as well, which is part of my movement called Black Males Acknowledgement Movement. I so the future has great comings and forthcomings for me. And it's to ultimately just be an instrumental blessing to the world. Awesome, awesome. I do have a question for you, by the way, bringing that up. Uh, being a survivor of domestic violence, um, and this is just a side question. 
Do you feel that we can actually have programs as males to help us as abusers? Of course. And then keep in mind, you know, and I know you're talking just from a male's perspective, but, you know, programs for those that are abusers, whether it be whatever sex, men or women, because, you know, abusers go from both ends of the spectrum and gender. Yes, you know, having those programs to be able to help that person to better manage what it is that they're going through so they can filter out their emotions in a more healthier manner, support groups of any sort would be, you know, like a plus, like a bonus to society in general. Right. But again, so it takes that individual to acknowledge, I have a problem. I need help to go to the resources. So yeah, you know, having those resources for abusers, whether it be male or female, is definitely one, you know, that's out there that's needed. And the more resources, the better. Right. I feel whether we're together or not at the end of the day because of the problem, if I can become a better person from it, or we both can become better people from it, that would be such a great thing. Yes, definitely. Just being able to, you know, work together and getting to the root of, you know, issues and problems and, you know, filtering out, you know, in the best, healthiest manner possible is, you know, basically the objective. Yeah, I love that. Let's see it. We get all type of positivity. I'm loving this. I'm loving this. I'm loving this. So. <laughs> So my next question is, how can people get to know you? How can they buy your books? What can we do to contact you if we need to? How can we sure. get to um, Actually, with the book, um, Irresistible You, Evolving to Become a Better Version of Yourself, it is on Amazon. And, you know, who's not on Amazon? You're more than welcome to plug in to Amazon. Um, plug in my name, Tracy Smalls, or the actual title, Irresistible You. And you should have no issues finding it. If you're wanting to continue to have conversations with me, you're more than welcome to shoot me an email. Um, I invite you, you know, at any point in your life, you know, I welcome you and I just want to be instrumental in your life. Tracy N. Smalls at gmail.com. That's T-R-A-C-Y, the letter N, S-M-A-L-L-S at gmail.com. Or you can shoot me an email at one. The number one, inspiring the world at gmail.com. And you can also follow me on my um, website, www.inspiringtheworld.us. I know I've given a lot of information thus far, but or you can follow me on my social media pages as well, which is Tracy Smalls. Tracy N. Smalls, I'm sorry. And that's social media, Facebook, and Instagram. And Twitter. So this is the part of the show where I give you the final word. Um, you can give shout outs, advice, whatever you want to say, the floor is yours. Sure. In regards to final remarks, I just want you to get up on a daily basis and just celebrate, celebrate, celebrate your life no matter what. Just be happy. Be willing to work on self and know that not just myself, but yourself. We all are a work in progress. And at the end of the day, we all have a purpose here on this earth. And I want you to truly find that purpose. Because once you find it, then you're going to do nothing but live your life out. And then you're going to live it out boldly. You're going to live it out limitless. You're going to limit out, you're going to live it out fearless. But it takes tapping into knowing what you've been created to do. That's ultimately why we're here on this earth. Finding purpose. So, sister, brother, finding purpose is, is crucial. It's imperative. And once you tap into it, you know that you can conquer any and everything that you desire to conquer. You can become any and everything that you desire to become or be. And you will be. And you're going to be. Literally, everything that you put your mind to. There's no limit to your success. And then also remember, you... I, we, we define our own success. Don't let your parents, your siblings, your colleagues, social media, they're obsolete. You define your success story. And when you find it, put forth the work. And I want you to go out there in this world, as I continue to go out in this world, and just make a beautiful story. Make them storms 
into the most beautiful story there is that you can possibly imagine, possibly create. Get the canvas and just splatter the world with love, affection, understanding. Celebrate your life unapologetically. I urge you, please check out her social media. Please check out everything about it, because like I say, she is so awesome. She always have a kind word to say, and I'm telling you, she's been through so much. And here's my, and here's the big thing. We complain about our day, oh, my coffee's too cold, or, you know, this bill, that bill, or she said something, or he, hit, or he said something. People survive so much to where people have survived worse. So we really need to learn to be appreciative. And that's all I have to say about the subject. Next, we're going to talk about marriage with the Carters. Stay tuned. You know, even after 20 years, readers are still captivated with How to Lose a Black Woman. Now, in its second printing, follow the story of Bruce Williams. Hmm... Shall I say, mild mattered school teacher in search of love? Using social media, prayer, and a lot of trial and error, Bruce fights to learn what a true relationship is all about. Filled with original poetry by H.D. Campbell, it's a lesson from one young man's point of view. Buy How to Lose a Black Woman on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Smashwords, in your favorite bookstore, and even on his website at www.hdcampbell3.com. And as always, let your writing fuel your spirit. Do you need editing and formatting services, promotion, or do you need a press kit? Let HD Campbell Productions put together a package to suit your needs. Let us handle your promotion, editing, press kits, photography service, and a lot more. We even do custom videos and videography. To learn more, log on to www.hdcampbell3.com or email us at hdcampbell3 at msn.com for a free brochure. You can also contact us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, and LinkedIn. We guarantee professional services at reasonable prices. Check us out, and as always, let your writing fuel your spirit. Welcome back to the show. I want to say before we go any further, the Author's Corner is really growing in numbers. I really want to thank you guys. I'm looking at the numbers of people who are watching, and it's actually growing. It's been growing well since 2009 when I first started this thing. I mean, it's just, we, we have grown so much, so I really do want to thank you. Now, next, I want to talk about uh, Walter and Alicia Carter, Above the Heart, LLC. Every marriage has issues. I don't care whether you, whether you go out a perfect couple or not. I mean, it's like everyone is going to run into an issue every now and then. Some are not more serious than others. It's not always going to be about cheating or finances or abuse. Whatever it's going to be, you have to be strong enough to get it. And one problem that I see that they're going to address is you always look for those big three, um, abuse, cheating, or finances. And a lot of times you prepare yourself mentally for so much for that, you don't know how to deal with the smaller problems, <laughs> which will let you turn into big problems if you don't take care of them. So without further ado, I'm going to shut up and give it away to my friends, the Carters. What you guys are doing? How long have you guys been married? This August, because <laughs> you see the dumb look to give me like, duh, like you don't know. I, I do know. <laughs> this August will make 25 years. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, she's been my girlfriend now <laughs> for 29. <laughs> you know, that counts. It you, does. You got, you got to take credit for every day now. <laughs> oh. Right. I am going to love this interview. You guys are so awesome. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> oh my God. So, so before I get started, I just want to say congratulations on the 25 year marriage. 
A problem that a lot of people that we have today in society is the fact that we don't honor marriage. We don't honor people who've been married that long. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Like, I'm going to tell you a quick story before we get started with the interviews. Um, last year, I posted I did a post on Facebook mm-hmm. about Ice Cube. Um, he's been married for about that long. Okay. And, you know, and, you know, I just love long marriage. And somebody, mm-hmm. somebody skeptical and said, why you put that up? He's supposed to be married that long. What, he's not supposed to be married? I was like, I'm just honoring the guy because I'm married and... I hope you married again that love. <laughs> but yes, I totally agree with you. I, I think it was, it was great that you posted that up about him because like you said, it was a long, it's been a long marriage. They're still together, still married. And it's marriage, it takes a lot. Right. Mm-hmm. Like I was telling Mr. Carter here, um, before you came back, um, this is my this is my second marriage. My first okay. marriage, my wife passed away. And we were married for about 13, 12, 13 years. Okay. So God gave me a chance to take, gave me a second chance to love as well. So mm-hmm. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of love, of a good marriage. So yes, and amen. Not- and congratulations on your your second marriage too. I'm so sorry to hear about that. What happened to in, with your wife in your first one? Well, one thing that um one thing I always learned. Everything is in God's time, so God, mm-hmm. is, yeah, He gave me the first one to teach me how to love the next one. So, if anything mm-hmm. happens, that's an awesome way of looking at it. Mm-hmm. Great way to look at yes. it, yes. So, to begin, first, I want to give you guys a huge welcome to the office corner. Thank you both for wanting to talk to me today. You're welcome. This was Thank great. you for it's having an us, definitely <laughs> an honor. So, so first, I'm going to ask you guys a huge question. You guys have been married 25 years ago, and now you guys have started an organization called Above the Heart LLC. Tell me a little bit about that organization. Okay, you want to talk about it? Okay. <laughs> well, the, the purpose for Above the Heart LLC is to help just that very thing, help marriages take, in, take their marriage to the next level. Marriage is just on during this time, marriages are struggling. Marriages are not acknowledged as much as they should be, uh, as it should be, and it's not respected in the way of, of anything else. You can get a license to get married just like you can get a license to do anything else. But in everything else, there's some type of knowledge that you have to have of it. Marriage, you don't have to have anything to get into it. Mm -hmm. So many people get into marriage, and once they find out that there's work in it, they easily walk away. They'll throw in the towel six months, less than five years, what's what's the average? Five years, Mm -hmm. and, and it's over with. So our goal is to help people take it to the next level because we've been through the trenches so because we've been through the trenches, we know what it takes, and we're willing to put in the work to help others get there. Let's see, right now I see you guys, I'm looking at you guys, I've seen, because the 25 years for me was almost, you know, was just like 13 years, and then now you see the up, you see the down, you've been there, you know what's going on. So my next question for you guys, what are some, uh, what, what are a couple of the big issues that, couples go through that you guys have seen? Oh, um, we have dealt with quite a few different circumstances with the couples that are our clients. Um, It's infidelity. Um, Some of it is lack of communication or just not wanting to talk at all. And um, or for example, you got so many families like, like, you know, blended families. So many guys have children. So many women have children. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that you're not marriage material. So Mm -hmm. when those families come together, you know, the baby mama drama, the baby daddy drama that you have to put up with, or the children who don't want to respect the husband or respect the wife, 
How do you come together with that? How do you bring those two families together as one under one umbrella? You know, it's, it's so many differences there. Or the family members learning to shed out family members and understand that that husband and that wife should just be that soul ones in that marriage and learn how to keep everybody else out. You know, just, just those simple things. Mm -hmm. um, it sounds simple, but you know, when it comes down to a marriage, it's it's a, it's a it's a hard thing to deal with. So, yeah, just just dealing with some of those issues. Also, right. budgeting and finances that comes Big a issue. problem. I mean, that one has really been uh, a major problem in the majority of the clients. That's always dealing with finances in addition to other things. But that's a lot, and um, just being um, intentional about dating. Or goals, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. I I like to travel. You may not like to travel, but we gotten married. Right. Now, what do we do? Because <laughs> I, I'm spending money on travel. You don't like it because you want to buy a house. But my goal wasn't that. But that's your goal. That's I'd rather just have a rental. You know, <laughs> I, I don't want to. I don't want to be paying a mortgage and taking care of the house. So how do we? How do we meet? In the middle because we didn't have that understanding and that's an issue because people don't have that understanding before mm -hmm. well let's talk about that for a second uh first i want to go back before we get into goals let's talk about that blended family situation where you come together and you have either the baby mama or the baby father who are very so vindictive to where they cause problems in the family. They, you know, you can't take care of my child the way I do. And how do you guys deal with that? I feel like there has to be a level of respect and understanding because when you have a blended family, it's not just like, for instance, it's not just me and him and the, my kids, his kids and our kids. It's, you also have to take an account for that other parent because there are certain things and certain ways that they raise their children. And if they're of God and they're lining up and they are positive, I think you should still instill those values in the child when they come to your home as well, so that they don't feel like they can get away with something when they with us, but then they can't, they got to do something different when, with their home with their mom or their dad. It has to be an understanding. You have to communicate with the other person. And a lot of times it's, it's not, that isn't the case because the, the child's mother or the child's father doesn't want to have anything to do with you. But because you are a part of this, these children's lives, it's not about the parents. It's about the children. And that's where we try to instill that in our clients. They need to come to some happy medium and get out of their egos and stop tripping because the children will suffer in the end. That's right, because it comes down to the children first and foremost. So the husband and the ex-wife or the ex-girlfriend or the mother, baby mama or uh, baby daddy, they may not want to have an understanding. And most of the time, it's not going to because they're in their chest. But if they're really focusing on their child, then you can have some type of understanding but if you can't, then you may have to go outside of the home and get the courts involved just to have that happy medium where, because it's one thing you don't want is you don't want your wife or your husband to be disrespected mm -hmm. by your child or that other woman or other man. Mm -hmm. You have to have the respect in your home at all times and you got to do what it takes to keep that respect and to stay on the same page together as one. So whatever decisions you make, you got to make that decision together mm -hmm. as one because you are one. You're one, no longer two, you're one. So you got to have that understanding as one. And if you make that solid, then the rest will work out. It, it has to. And also, I want to say you can't base it off of the other person. Like, for instance, I'm just going to give you a little simple scenario of what we went through. Um, we had all the children under, under our roof, and we would have them first before we ended up getting custody of them, or I'll say um, joint, joint custody and had primary placement. 
the um, children would just come on the weekends and holidays and stuff like that. So they were told some things about me that weren't true. However, I never talked down about their mother. I told them, that is your mother, you will respect her as such, period. Even when they told me, well, she said yada yada about you, that it doesn't matter what she said. I know that I had to do the right thing because I serve God regardless. And in the end, it'll all work out because they're going to get older and they're going to have to make them up their own mind on what they feel about you. And if you say something negative, they're going to remember that. I think that's an important part right there. Very important part is I never spoke negative about my kid's mother to them or around them. Mm -hmm. And no matter what the situation was, I never spoke. And I think that's an important thing to always bring to the table mm -hmm. is that you have to treat that person still with love and kindness, no matter what. Because if you do your part, it has to work out in your favor mm -hmm. because you are doing what God requires of you. And if that person that we're counseling does not understand the godly part of it, then we'll break it down and explain it to them as simple as possible. Because the fact is they got to know that they're not trying to, uh, uh, how else can I say this? You, they're not trying to kiss butt. They're trying to just be respectful. Mm -hmm. And just if they just continue to be respectful, no matter what. And if that means that you can't have to just cut off communication, then cut off communication. Because, you know, it, it's all about just being respectful and doing what it takes to please that child. I mean, to keep that, keep that child in their life. And that's all it is about, really, is that child. It's no longer about the adults. You know, um, you, Ms. Curry, you brought up an extra point. You actually talk a lot about ego versus the Bible. Oh, yeah. Um, this is kind of a hard ask, though. <laughs> That's okay. That's uh, okay. It may turn out to be a blessing. <laughs> can I keep some of this for the interview? Mm-hmm. With the grandson, yeah. But I made, yeah. I made when I when I, when I intro the interview, I made show some footage, some some behind the scenes footage when I intro the interview. You know what? That's good. Yeah, that's good because you know what? It shows the realness in things because so many times people put on a facade, and what you see is not what you really. I mean, what they really are like. You know what I'm saying? Our podcast be just like this. We jump up. We have to get... You, you, we apologize. Think, We're like, wait, our grandbaby trip. He'll come I, scream in here. <laughs> I, I, I like I like to try to keep it to uh, keep people understanding that even when we're out in public, even at our church events or whatever it may be, if she says something I don't like, I tell her or, and she'll tell me because I like her to know you know, openly that this is how I feel. I don't want to hide things, mm -hmm. but I'm still going to be respectful right. with it. But I don't want to put on this facade that, oh, we're so holier than thou that we, we don't have, have no problems. Problem. <laughs> yeah, we have problems. We just know how to go about it. That's yeah. all. And that's what I want people to always understand that we're not perfect. We still bump heads. But at the end of the day, when we go to bed, as long as we know how to kiss goodnight and say I love you, and we know that there's no hard feelings. Mm -hmm. That's all that matters at that point. So, you know, that, that, that's the realness in life. Too many marriages walk around blindfolds, and those blindfolds, you know, causes them to fall off of a cliff. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know about a lot of people, but my, my family, my, 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 on my mother's side, mm -hmm. there's a lot of to death do you part. So whatever problems you're having, you better pay attention. You're not going anywhere. Right. <laughs> yeah. We will right. fight. We, we do whatever we have to do, but you're not walking out that door. <laughs> right. And that's a good thing. That's what it seems like you guys are right now. Oh, yeah. 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 And that's exactly where we are. We were, I remember we, we was having a discussion. We were just talking, just random talking. And he was like, I just asked him, I said, um, if something happened to me, uh, would you want to remarry? He was like, 
No, because ain't nobody going to do what you do. <laughs> that, <that's laughs> he said, hard... you know exactly what I like, how I like, and you do this, 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 Like this. you just said, that's a hard answer. It is because a hard answer. Simply, um, I got, I'm set in my ways. She, she, 25 years, you know exactly what it takes for everything. Now, to find somebody else, I'm going to be looking for that to be exactly what I get. I'm not going to get that. It's going to take time. It's going to take another 25 years to build that. He's not that patient. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Unless, God, I know anything is possible with you, but you know, right now, just leave it alone as it is. <laughs> just leave it as it is. I ain't trying to figure it out. Oh, you know what? Let's just call it right now. Neither of you are going anywhere. You guys are going to be here for a while. There you go. There you go. We're just going to put it like that for right now. Yes. yes. <laughs> and I'm loving this. So my next question is, okay, we talked about things that problems, but you guys also have certain strengths that you bring to the table. What, what, what do you individually bring into the table as far as strength? Well, let me tell you what his strength is, and I really appreciate it. One of his strengths. When, like, when, no matter what the circumstance is or the situation is, he always look at the glass half full. He don't, he don't ever say, well, what if or this might happen or that? No, he go full-fledged. He, he steps out on faith, and I love that because no matter what, like if, even if I'm feeling a certain type of way, and he'll be like, well, baby, you know what? God is on our side. God going to work it out. If it's his will, it's going to be all right. You know, and, and, that is, and it helps me because I'm like, you sure all right. It really doesn't matter what I, it's all about what God thinks and what he says. <laughs> but he, he is very good with that. His faith is, I love it. It's very encouraging. That is his strength, his faith. Well, let me just say, because the fact that when I fail, I fail so hard. I had no place to go but up. And ever since then, that's, that's, that's all I do. I look up and I know that he's got me no matter what. So I thank you for that. But that, that's why that is. But I, I, I'll say her strength is um, she's got this thing that sometimes it can annoy me. But <laughs> it's a strength. <laughs> it, it is a strength because she's very, very emotional. And she'll see somebody's problem. She'll listen to something and she'll understand no matter what. She'll see what their problem is. She'll understand them. And she'll, she always finds some way to understand something that somebody's going through, no matter what it is. And I think that's a plus for her because of the fact that I'm not, I'm that straight to the point hammer type person, you know, yes, I, 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 if you, if it's black and white, I'm going to say it's black and white and that's that, you know, she's not, you know, she's going to tiptoe and she's going to listen and she's going to try to pull out the empathy and everything. She's going to break it down. And she's going to cry with them if they're going to cry. And if they're going to cry, she's going to cry with them no matter how long it takes. But that's a good thing at times, you know, because she, it's where it balances us out. You know, so, so that's, yeah, that's, I just that, like I to, think that's her strength. I like that's to identify with the person that I'm talking to so I can get an understanding. I try to put myself in a position and like, oh my God, how would I feel if I was dealing with this? And, uh, and that's why sometimes I end up crying because I really, my heart goes out to them. Um, but it's more of a supportive cry, <laughs> if that's even a, a thing. But you know I, um, I do express empathy for anybody's situation. I'm going to tell on myself a little bit. There's, there's times where we'd be sitting there watching movies. <laughs> and she'll look over there at me. She's like, you crying? I'm sitting there like, no. Nah. <laughs> Something was in my eye. <laughs> yeah. So, but I, I think I think God gets you to the point where no matter who you are, He will pull it out of you. Mm -hmm. 
and we make sure that you can empathize with something <laughs> somewhere, somehow. <laughs> and it does work. Okay, I can't deny this because this is going to go over the internet, so I'm going to just admit it now. <laughs> 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 Movies do that to me too. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Thank you for admitting that. <laughs> So, so you ever can't be denying it. This, this sentence from my YouTube channel. No, nope, no, nope, we did an interview Amen. with man, and he said it right here. Right. Oh yeah. That's so, that's that's good to hear. That is so awesome. So, um, you mentioned you mentioned a serious fall. Uh, without getting too far into you guys' business, um, what was your lowest point, and how did God get you out? You know what? I, I, I don't never mind talking about my testimony because when I talk about it, it's not to brag, it's mm -hmm. to help. Yeah. So uh, I, don't, I don't never mind sharing that. Yeah. What, my fall or our fall, when I fell, it was alcohol that took me down. I, I, was, I was a functional alcoholic. I, and I drank none. I drank... You remember antibuse? You're, you're old enough to remember antibuse. I drank on antibuse. That's that's how bad it was for me. I drank while on antibuse. I went through treatment center after treatment center, and yes, it made me sick as a dog. It, I was I never took it anymore after that. But I I I went through treatment center after treatment center after treatment center, and it was my first time having alcohol poisoning. Uh, I was six years old. That's, that's, that's the first drink I have. Six years old, I was given a drink. Um, I, I grew up in a household that was alcoholics. My stepfather, my father, you know, um, watched my father as he died um, drinking and fighting. Great man, but, you know, lost in my father. Uh, died also, a heart attack, but he was also an alcoholic. My mother, you know, thank God she, she stopped. Uh, Lord changed her life, but she was an alcoholic. Uh, so, you know, it was, it was something that was, I, I learned growing up. Mm -hmm. It was, that was the way of life. Even abuse, you know, in our marriage, it, it dealt with abuse. You know, the physical abuse, abuse, the verbal abuse, it was, it was there. Mm -hmm. um, it was part of what we dealt with. And finally, it got to the point where she got a restraining order. Our marriage was falling apart because she, had, she couldn't take no more. I came home drunk and destroying the house. Drunk, upset. Why, I don't know. But most of the time, it was because of the fact that I wanted to stop but didn't know how. So when, when I hit rock bottom, that was the moment where God dealt with me. Um, I was living in my mother's house, sleeping on the couch. And at that moment, I heard a voice speak to me one night that was so powerful. Uh, I woke up, sat up, it's like, what the heck is going on? I reached down, grabbed the beer that I had, and I was sipping on it. And I laid back down, it really didn't even have a taste for it anymore. And that goes to, at that moment, God was already working through me because we had joined a different church at that time. And at that time, uh, the elder of the church had spoke to me and said, you know, what the Lord had shared with him already in a dream about what was going to happen and what was going to take place, how the Lord was going to change my life. And at that time, he, I guess he was working. He was working because I, and I'm, I'm going to make this real short without giving all the details but he that moment he, he he told me that he was going to separate me from all those other people and that he was just going to have me to himself and at that moment things started to happen in my life a friend of mine knocked at the door part of what was told to me that night was he was going to separate me from everything and a friend of mine that next day knocked on the door and said uh I hey, come with me. I went with him. He said, uh, he took me to this house that all it was fully furnished, lights, gas, furniture in there. It had everything except for a TV. Now 
mind you, he said he was going to have me to himself. There was no TV. So obviously, you, you got me because you got my attention. There's no TV. There was a radio clock radio there. The job I had, I was not able to make it to work. Because, I mean, make it to church because I was work late hours. I lost that job that day. I'm calling the elder of the church, and I'm like, man, you know, all I'm t it's telling them everything that's happening. Like, man, what, what? I'm just so fed up with this. And he was like, just come to church. You know, God is working things out for you. He, he, trust me. Trust me. Just trust him. Trust him. And next thing I know, the next day, I get another job that now I'm able to make it to church. So I'm, uh, God is just pouring into me, and I'm like, man, why is all this going on? What's happening? You know, but at the same time, he, I'm, I'm sitting there, I'm reading my word, I'm getting engulfed in it, I'm, I'm crying, I'm boohooing, and I'm still drinking. But slowly that taste was being taken from me. And finally I had to confess, and I had to give up. And I, when I finally did, here we are. I, I, and when he spoke to me, he said, if you drink another drink, that's it. You're going to die. Now, I didn't know if he meant that I was, and this was the Lord. I, I don't know if he meant I was going to die in spiritual death or if I was just going to die carnally. But I didn't want to find out. So <laughs> that was it. I, I was done. Ever since then, my life has been on a different path. I love that. What brought you back home? What brought me back home? Well, when she noticed that I was, because she had a restraining order. She handed the pastor a restraining order to prevent me from going to church. <laughs> the pastor said, well, you know, I'm, I'm not going to prevent that man from coming to church, hearing the word, because he needs that word. Mm -hmm. That what I would do is I will separate you two, and I will make sure that the deacons keep him away from you. That at all times while here, you two are never in contact. And they did that. And while I sat there, and I came, I still came faithfully, and they made sure we were separated, that all while I came, she started to guess, realize that the Lord was dealing with me. Mm -hmm. See, because, see, the important part there was we had to separate. Mm -hmm. And I had to focus on me, not us, not her, not the children. I couldn't help her if I couldn't help myself. Mm -hmm. And I was not able to help myself. And the reason why I failed so many other times miserably was because I was doing it for her or doing it for the children or just doing it for a part-time thing. So when I really wanted to change for myself, that's when God started to work on me and in my life. And she started to see the God in me. Mm -hmm. And as she saw the God in me, she decided that she wanted her marriage. And she came to me one day. Or did I come to you? You came to me. He did. He came to me. Because <laughs> he had. He used to come and talk to me all No, time. no. I think I had went to the altar. And when she saw that I went to the altar. That's when I seen it. But the first week he came to me and we went and had counsel a counseling session with the elders the elder and his wife. And then after that session, he went to the altar. But I had to want it and I had to desire it. No matter what the outcome of our marriage was, mm -hmm. I had to desire change in me. So at that point, I knew the alcohol had to go. I knew that the violent behavior had to go. I had to give it all to God. And I had to walk in that. It didn't just happen overnight. I had to walk in that and expect that it was going to be rough times, but know that God can do it. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened. I Because, see, the mistake, and I got to say this, baby. I got to say this. Okay. The mistake people make, because here's the minister part coming out. The, the mistake people make is they think that they give something to God, mm -hmm. and then he just takes it and then... No, now you're free. You okay tomorrow? <laughs> I don't have those challenges. No, those challenges are there. Mm -hmm. You just got to wean yourself from it. And it takes 90 days to form a habit. So you got to 90 days continually give God what you want Him to have 
and continue to walk in that and know that it will happen. And it, I, hey, when I gave it to him, that was it. My life has been better. And I continually write to this day. I know what it is that I faced. And there's certain things I will not do because I know that I don't want to tempt that side of me again. And that's, that's it. You know, um, uh, I want to tell you something. First, let me tell you this. Your prime example, too, to show that just like marriage, God's gifts, like you just said, He just doesn't give you a gift and it's over with. That takes work as well. And see, I can see the fruits of the work that you're doing. So, I mean, in your marriage now and in this interview, so, like I say, so for everybody, so for everybody who's listening, remember, God's gifts also take work. So don't they think he's going to bless you and you're going to go back out and do the same thing tomorrow. Exactly. Night. That's right. Marriage is a gift from God. And at the same time, people do the same thing. As a matter of fact, I posted that up on Facebook this morning about prayer. Marriage is a gift from God. What are you going to do with it? Because you cannot just say I do and then expect it all to just work out on its own and you not put forth the work. Mm -hmm. Marriage is a full-time career in its own. <laughs> it sure is. It really is. Absolutely. And I don't want to get emotional saying this, but I know what God did for me. Yeah. And I know it's so many marriages these this year, last before the pandemic, there was so many marriages, so many relationships where women were being killed, family, whole families were being murdered. And this is by a spouse. Yeah. This is by boyfriends. This is by girlfriends. This is by jealousy. This is about rage. This is about financial struggles. Mm -hmm. So many men were being killed because women who are struggling with uh, their emotional issues and uh, what, what is it called when they, uh, they have children and then um, what's the word I'm looking for? Post, uh, postpartum? Oh, postpartum, Post, depression. postpartum depression. There, 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 there's so many marriages struggling with that. So many marriages struggling and relationships where men and women struggle with drugs, struggle with alcohol, struggle with financial uh, issues. And now with the pandemic, with job loss and everything in this, you know, all together, all of that equates to addictions mm -hmm. and so many so many different kinds of addictions, and you name it, but they need help. Mm -hmm. They need help. Yeah. Now, well, that's a great segue there because here's my thing. I need help in my marriage. I come to you guys. All right, let's say, let's say I actually do actually have that problem where I do, I do hit my spouse and I am cheating on her. What could you guys do for me? Well, first, if if you're coming to me and you're talking, we're we're talking to both both spouses and both of them together. Um, admission is the first step to, to to correcting the problem. So as long as the 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 spouse is ready for that journey and that the other spouse and they can handle it, oh yes, because sometimes in circumstances like that, if they're not ready to move forward, we have to refer them to a counseling because you have to rectify whatever it is hindering you from moving forward first. If it's something that they're ready to move forward on, we, we do tackle that problem, that issue first. And um, we have different exercises and um, projects and things for them to do um, together so that they can be engaged and see where they are. We also have um, like questionnaires and things for them to fill out first to see what, and separately, like so we can see where each person is and if she's not w willing to move forward but he is they have to get to that middle point where they're both ready to move forward together because it can't be stagnant it can't be she down here he up here yeah. or vice versa or it won't work they have to be on one accord so that's why it depends on where they are in the circumstance if we can coach them forward or have to refer them to counseling because when it comes down to if that's the case where violence is 
part of the marriage mm-hmm. or relationship, that's not acceptable no matter mm-hmm. what. Violence is never acceptable. And that's something that whichever one in that marriage or relationship that's the violent one mm-hmm. has to first seek out help for finding out what the root of that cause is and what they need to do to correct that because that's a separate issue yes. from the marriage because that individual needs to find out why they have so much anger or rage and what they can do and find out do you need to separate from the household if you're living together to solve the problem first Mm -hmm. because you don't want it to continue or can you solve it while you're still living in the household and if so what's your what's your solution for is uh getting the help getting help are and, you going to follow through? And, and, and also, you need the woman or the guy, whichever one is the victim, needs to have an escape plan mm-hmm. for when there's an issue. Mm-hmm. Because you don't want that to be, because it's never acceptable. I, I, I'm, I'm totally against any of it. Um, and, and I do speak strong about it because I was the one who was the victimizer, so mm-hmm. to speak, but because I know where I was and I know what what my what was my cause for it, and a lot of it was growing up being mm-hmm. angry, mm-hmm. and what I dealt with in life, but there was no excuse for anything I did wrong, and getting the help I need make the difference. So because I did that. I know what it takes. So I, I, I really encourage anybody who will watch this to know that you can change your life. Mm-hmm. You can be a better person. All you got to do is look in the mirror, ask yourself, who do you see? And if you see somebody who you're not or somebody that's not who you're supposed to be, then get help. Because that's you. You obviously know there's a problem. Mm-hmm. Like Mr. Carter said, sometimes you have to separate in order to be whole again. Sometimes you have to you have to let God lead you if you're not right. Because you got to get right for your money if that's meant to be. There have been so many issues lately where. Fathers have been killing their wives and their kids and everything. And it's like, it's just so sad to where this type of intervention is really needed. So don't, so don't even worry. That was actually really only part one. You get to see them again next week. We're going to talk about how they interject God into their counseling sessions. And we're going to learn a lot more about how to fix our marriages. So stay tuned for that. Well, before I get into AC's two cents, let's see what's coming up next week on the Elder's Corner.
coming soon, the second printing of the Sergeant Wise Guy Chronicles, reintroducing you to a special agent, Sergeant Wise Guy, the government's top strategic and agent with a very sarcastic tongue. <laughs> A former ranger, he heads up a team of specialists taking care of missions too big or too messy or other agents don't want to handle. His first mission takes him to Paris where a stolen Gold War nuclear warhead was discovered. While discovering the warhead's origin, a lost dead love resurfaces. Can Sergeant Wise Guy resolve both before the secret plans for the warhead is complete? Well, check out the second printing of the Sergeant Wise Guy Chronicles, coming soon. Have you seen The Author's Corner with H.G. Campbell? It's the best show you're not watching. Every week we have authors, editors, artists, and others from various industries. There are three ways to watch Author's Corner, primarily on our YouTube channel, HD Television, on our HD Television Facebook page, and on our media page at www.hdcampbellmedia.com. It's the Author's Corner with HD Campbell. Check it out weekly, and as always, let your writing fuel your spirit. And God bless you. Last week's interview with uh, Tim D.B. McCain, we talked about the wars in Atlanta. Uh, the same thing we, we talked to the Carters uh, a minute ago. Marriage takes a lot of work. Yes, marriage takes work. Without work, you can't really get to the fun times. You can't really, if you're, you know, you guys are amazing, but then what? So you always got to make sure you work. But I use that analogy to talk about writing. Writing is a lot of work. People who love to write, who love to put stories together, those of us, those of you guys looking from the outside in realize, have to realize that writing is work. So for all you new writers that are trying to craft stories and then you get stuck and you got to put it down and, and then uh, don't quit. That's what a lot of new writers do. They like to quit. No, it's work. You have to put in the work. You have to remember I told you a few weeks ago, get it get it done, then get it right. You can always get it right. Um Sergeant Wise Guy um remix that I'm doing. That is a lot of hard work. That's a lot of research, a lot of the character development because I'm because I'm updating I'm updating a lot of things because a lot of stuff was dated from the last edition. I'm updating a lot of things. There's like a lot updating a lot of characters. I'm making sure everything is up to date. And believe me, that's not an easy task. But I'm mainly just talking about the work. No matter what the work is, whether you have to do work in editing, in finding an editor, you have to do the work in the research, you have to do the work in your character development, you have to make sure you take the time to do this. The reason I'm telling you take your time, even if you have a bump off a deadline, to make sure that it's right. But this is why I tell people in my publishing company, I will blow off a deadline just to make sure you got this book right, and I and I mean that. I rather I I will not put you out there if you if your book is junk. I don't want some book reviewer saying, "Oh my God, this book is poorly edited." No, 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 no. No, I'm making sure your book is edited, making sure the characters are tight, making sure everybody is good. I will not put you out there if you are on some junk. So. This is what I'm saying. If you want a quality product, if you want to make sure everything is right, I don't care how long it takes, 
get it right. Don't let nobody rush you. Don't say this should have been done. And also, too, seek out a professional editor. I'm a professional editor, and there are others out there. And they'll tell you, it's gonna, it may take a minute, but we'll make sure your stuff is good by the time it's done. So, but I can talk about this forever, forever. Thank you for another episode of The Author's Corner. Thank you for tuning in. As always, let your writing be good, and God bless. And also to take care of each other out there.